more than I thought it was going to. In this video, I'll be showing you how to make this beanie balaclava headpiece that Zoe Kravitz wears as Catwoman in her new movie, The Batman. This beanie was pretty quick to make and it only uses one stitch, so it's perfect for beginners. I'm making it in an adult small. I have a fairly small head, so if you feel like you have a medium to large head, you might want to make it a little bit bigger than what I make in the video, but I explain in the video how to do that and I'll also make sure that I leave it in the description box. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you hit that subscribe button and follow me at my Instagram stephtashi underscore handmade. For this project I used 70 grams of 12 ply acrylic yarn, a 6 millimeter hook and a pair of scissors. As always if you have any questions please leave them below in the comments and I will get back to you. Okay so to start you're going to grab your yarn and make a slip knot. Then we're going to chain up 88. Okay, so once you've chained up 88, we're going to block off that last stitch, chain up one more time, and now going into that stitch that we've blocked off, so the second chain from the hook, it's a bit hard to see because I'm using black yarn, but I'll turn up the exposure and hopefully you'll be able to see the stitches. And we're just going to go into that second chain from the hook and do a slip stitch. So for a slip stitch, you need to insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, and pull through again. And you just need to keep going all the way down the line, doing slip stitches until you get to the end. And you should have a total of 88 slip stitches when you get to the end. Once you've done your 88 slip stitches, join back in and I'll show you what we'll be doing next. So now I've just reached the end of the first row and we're going to get started on the second row. So to do that, we're going to chain up one, turn our work, and now we're going to go into the back loop only. So we've got our front loop over here and our back loop here, and we're going to go into the back loop only. So inserting only into this little part of the V, we're going to insert and do a slip stitch. So yarn over, pull through, pull through again. So inserting into that back loop only, I'm going to insert, yarn over, pull through, and pull through again. So now you're just going to go all the way down doing back loop slip stitches. And this is going to be the only stitch that we use in this pattern other than chains. So you're going to go ahead and continue doing back loop slip stitches with a chain up one and turn at the end. In total, you'll need to do eight rows for a small, 10 rows for a medium, and 12 rows for a large, making sure you have 88 slip stitches in each row. So right now I'm working on row two. So keep going until you get to the end of row eight, 10 or 12, and join back in and I'll show you what to do next. Once you've made it to the end of this first portion, we are going to chain up one like normal, turn our work, and we're going to do our back loop slip stitch into the first 70 stitches. If you want, you can count out 70 stitches and put in a stitch marker, or alternatively, you can count 18 stitches from the other side and put in a stitch marker, but I'm just going to count 70 as I go. So go ahead and put one back loop slip stitch into the first 70 stitches and then join back in. Once you've done 70, you can count 18 from this end to make sure that you've done the right amount. Now that we've done our 70 back loop slip stitches, we're going to do exactly what we've done at the end here, but from stitch 70, we're going to chain up one, turn our work, and now go back down the row, putting 70 back loop slip stitches into each of the stitches. So you should have the same number of stitches for both of these rows, for rows nine and 10. So now we're gonna continue doing rows of 70 back loop slip stitches, 
doing our chain up of one and turning at the end of each stitch. You're gonna go ahead and continue doing the rows with 70 back loop slip stitches until you've done 11 rows in this section. So you wanna get up to the end of the 11th row, or if you're counting from the start, that's going to be the 19th row. For a small, for a medium, it will be the 21st row, and for a large, it will be the 23rd row. So when you get up to the end of this section, join back in and I'll show you what's next. Okay, so now I have finished doing my 11 rows in this shorter section, or 19 rows counting from the foundation chain. So now what we're going to do is into this last stitch, we're going to do an increase. So as you can see here, I've got one stitch left in this row. So I'm currently doing row 19. As I am making a small. If you're making a medium, this will be 21 rows. And if you're making a large, this will be 23 rows. And every time that I refer to the 19th row in this little section, you would just replace that with the number of stitches that you have to do for your size. So in row 19, at the very end, we're going to do two back loop slip stitches into that last back loop. So I'm going to insert my hook, yarn over, pull through, pull through again. Then going straight back into that same stitch, I'm going to insert my hook, yarn over, pull through, and pull through again. So we've essentially done two back loop slip stitches into that last stitch. Now I'm going to chain up one, and I'm going to go all the way back down, doing one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. So this is going to mean that this row and our next few rows is going to have 71 back loop slip stitches because we've just done an increase of one. So this row will have 71 back loop slip stitches. When you get to the end, we're just going to do a chain up of one and turn as usual and come back up to the top. And you're going to keep doing this until you have eight rows in this section. So you should have eight rows of 71 back loop slip stitches. For a small, that will bring us up to row 27, a medium row 29, and a large will get up to row 31. So when you get to that point, join back in. So now I've made it to the end of row 27, and I'm just going to do that last back loop slip stitch. And now we're going to chain up one as usual but turn our work and this time we're going to do a decrease. So this is going to bring us back to doing 70 back loop slip stitches before we did that increase. So to do the decrease, you need to insert into that first back loop, yarn over, pull through, and then straight into the next back loop along, we're going to insert our hook, yarn over, pull through, and then you should have three loops on the hook and you're gonna pull the first loop through the second two loops. So that's how we do our decrease and that's taken us from 71 back loop slip stitches in the previous rows back down to 70 like we did over here. So now you're going to continue doing your rows with 70 back loop slip stitches until you've done an another 11 rows. So this row that I'm doing now is counting in that 11. So in total it will be up to row 38. For a small row 40 for a medium or row 42 for a large. So keep going until you get to the end of row 38 or if you're counting from when we did the decrease, that'll be 11 rows. So once you get to the end of row 11 of this section, your beanie should be looking something a little like this. So now you can see we've finished up at the other end. So now all we have to do is do a chain up of one and then cut off our yarn and leave a bit of a tail for weaving in later. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the other side. We're gonna go back to this side now and I'm going to grab my yarn, make a slip knot, put it on my hook and now we're going to join on to this stitch right here. So this is the last stitch that we did in this row where we changed from doing 88 back loop slip stitches to 70. So this was the last stitch that I went into here. So I'm gonna go into that next stitch across. So into that next stitch, I'm going to insert my hook. Then I'm going to yarn over, pull through, and pull through again to join on. So now we are going to do a slip stitch going all the way down the rest of this row. So we're just gonna put one back loop slip stitch 
into each stitch until we get to the end. And then we're going to turn around and come back up to the top and I will show you the next few steps. Okay, so now we're going to chain up one and turn our work. And now we're going to go all the way back down until we've almost made it to the end of this row. You're gonna to wanna to leave the last two stitches free. Okay, so now we're coming up to the end of row two. From where we've joined on, I'm going to start counting that as row one, um, otherwise it's gonna get a bit confusing. So this new section that we've just joined on from, we're gonna start counting from the start. So I've just done row one, this is row two that I'm doing now. And into the last two stitches of row two, I'm going to do a decrease. So it's gonna be the same thing that we did over here. And we're just going to insert into that first stitch. So the second last stitch, yarn over, pull through, and then into that last stitch, we'll go straight away, insert, yarn over, pull through, and pull through two. So we've skipped that stitch where we joined onto in the first row. So we're not counting that as a stitch, but we're actually gonna count that as a decrease. So, so now we're going to chain up one, turn our work, and we're going to do another decrease. So we're gonna go into that first stitch, and then straight into the second stitch and do another decrease. So basically, this is now row three that I'm up to. So every even numbered row, we're going to do a decrease at the end of the row. And every odd numbered row, we're going to do a decrease at the start of the row. This is going to line them up so that they're back to back. So basically, you wanna be doing a decrease on every row when you get to the end that's close to the bit that we've already done. So we're basically going to decrease this down and make some room for our eyes. And we're just gonna bring it down until it's big enough to cover our nose. So you can go ahead and continue doing this pattern with the increases at the end of the even numbered rows and at the start of the odd numbered rows. So I'll show you one more time. So now we've reached the end of row four and I've got three stitches left. So I'm just doing my last back loop slip stitch. Now into those last two stitches, we're going to do a decrease again. So into the first back loop and the second back loop and pull through. Now we're gonna chain up one and do another back loop slip stitch decrease. So now you're gonna keep going until you've done 11 rows in this section. So once you get up to the 11th row from when we joined on, join back into the video and I'll show you what to do next. Okay, so now I've made it up to row number 11 in this section since we've joined on. So now we're going to turn around and go up to the end as usual, but this time we are not going to do any increases or decreases on any of our rows. So we're just going to flatten it back out and this is going to be the little bump that goes over our nose. So now I'm at the end and I'm going to do a back loop slip stitch into the last stitch. No increases or decreases, turn it around and no increases or decreases again. So now we're up to row 13. So I've just done row 12 with no increases or decreases and row 13. And you need to do 10 rows with no increases or decreases. I've just done rows 12 and 13, so I've done two rows in this flat section. So that means I need to continue on and do eight more. So in total, you'll have 10 rows with no increases or decreases. So now I've made it to the end of row 21 from where we joined on, or row 10 from the flat section. And I'm going to chain up one, turn around as normal, and go all the way up until I get to the end. But when I get to my last stitch, I'm going to do an increase. So we're going to do two back loop slip stitches into the last stitch of this row. So you can see here is the last stitch. So to do the increase, I'm going to do one slip back loop slip stitch as normal. And then I'm going to insert my hook back into that same stitch and do another back loop slip stitch. So it's the same as what we did up here but this time we're going to do it on every row. So the end of every even numbered row, you're going to do the increase, because this is row 22 here. Then for row 23 and all of the odd numbered rows, we're going to do an increase at the start of the row. So now I've just chained up one and turned and into that first back loop slip stitch, 
you need to do two back loop slip stitches. So there's one as normal, and now I'm gonna go back in again and do my second. And then I'm gonna go down the rest of the row doing one back loop slip stitch into every stitch as normal. Then when we get to the end, we're going to turn around, come back up and do an increase at the end of the even numbered row, which will be row 24. And then an increase at the start of the odd numbered row, which will be row 25. So now we're going back up to the top. I've got two stitches left. The increases do make it a bit more tricky to do the stitch, but you will find a hole. You just need to force it through a little bit. So we're gonna do our first back loop slip stitch into that last stitch, and now our second. Then we're gonna chain up one and do two back loop slip stitches into that first stitch. So skipping the turning chain into that first stitch, and we're going to do two back loop slip stitches and another. So now you can continue doing this until you've done 11 rows in this section to mirror the other side. So I'm now on my fourth row in this section. So I'm gonna go ahead once I finish this row and do seven more. You're basically going to do 11 rows in this section with the increases at the end of the even numbered rows and the start of the odd numbered rows. So if you're counting from where we joined on, it's going to be 11 rows for the decrease, 10 rows for the flat and 11 rows for the increase, which will bring us up to row 32. So just go ahead and continue on until you get to row 32 and then join back in and I will show you what we're going to do next. Okay, so now that you've finished row 11 in this section, it should be looking something a little bit like this. So now what we're going to do, so at the end of row 11 in this section, or if we're going 11, 10, 11, that'd be 32. So I'm at the end of row 32, and I've just done my two back loop slip stitches into that last stitch, so I did just do an increase. And so now we're just going to go into this main part of the beanie where we did the 70 back loop slip stitches but we want to go back to doing 88 back loop slip stitches so because i've got 17 in here i'm going to chain up one and now i'm going to go straight in and do a back loop slip stitch into that first back loop so i'll just show you where we're going so we're going into this back loop here joining it together so when you come back down you want to make sure that you do a slip stitch into that chain that we just did because that's what's going to make the 88. So we're gonna be doing the 70 back loop slip stitches going all the way up on this panel. Then when we get to the end, we're gonna turn around and come back down doing 88 back loop slip stitches. But join back in once you get to the end of this row and I will take you through the next row. Okay, so now I've made it to the end of that row and this is the row where we stitched the chin piece onto the head piece and I'm going to, like normal, chain up one, turn my work and go all the way back down doing one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. When you get to the section where the chin portion joins the head portion, join back in and I will show you how to keep going for that. But otherwise, you just need to do the same number of rows that you did in the first portion, counting from the row that we're up to now. So we're not going to count that one row that we did previously. So if you did a small, that would be 8 rows, a medium would be 10 rows, and a large would be 12 rows. Just make sure you mirror the other side. Row that we did previously is not going to count as the first row. I'm currently doing the first row. So now once I finish this row, I'm going to do seven more rows, so eight in total. So just continue doing the rows with 88 back loop slip stitches until you've done eight rows in this section. Or however many rows you need to do to mirror the other side. Join back in to see where the head portion meets the chin portion. So now I've made it up to the section where they join on. And I'm just doing my last back loop slip stitch into the back loop slip stitch from the head portion. And now we've got that chain. So I'm gonna do a back loop slip stitch into the chain. And now I'm going to continue doing one back loop slip stitch into every stitch going all the way down. When you get to the end, you're just gonna chain up one, 
turn your work and keep doing the rows of 88 back loop slip stitches until you have eight rows of 88 back loop slip stitches in total. If you are also making a small. For a medium, it'll be 10 and for a large, 12. So we're not counting that first row where we joined on and kept going, we're only counting the full rows. Okay, so once you've finished, your beanie should be looking like this. So you've got the gap for your face and then a long bit that's gonna wrap around to the back of your head. So if you're making a larger size, you will need to add extra rows here, just like you did at the start. However, if you've made it in this size as an adult small-ish, and you try to stretch it around your head and it's not going to be big enough, don't worry, we can add more stitches here. So what you would do is just continue on, instead of finishing at eight, you could do 10 rows in this section or 12. And then all you'd need to do is join back on to the start where you started from and add the same number of extra rows to this side. It might leave a little bit of a line, but it's not going to be obvious. So just add, if you add two or four extra rows to this side, just add two or four extra rows to this side and that will make it a bit bigger and you won't have to start all over again. So if you have made the correct size or once you've finished with all of your rows after the face portion, after this portion, what we're going to do is we're going to fold our beanie in half. So you'll notice that there's a little bit of a ridge here. This is where we connected it on after the face. So one side has, one side has a bit of a ridge, but the other side doesn't. So you want this side to be the outside facing once you flip it in the right way. So I'm actually going to turn it so that I am facing the correct way that I want it to be. And then I'm going to flip the face over the back. And now all we're going to do is we're going to do slip stitches to join the two halves together. So we're basically turning our big rectangle into more of a square. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, gonna insert my hook. So now holding the two sides of the panel together, I'm going to put my hook through the front loop in the panel closest to me and through the back loop in the one furthest away. Now I'm going to yarn over, pull through two and pull through one. So now I'll do that again. So I'm going through the front loop of the panel closest to me, the back loop of the further one away, yarn over, pull through, pull through again. So you're just going to continue doing your slip stitches just like this, going all the way down. And when you get to the end, I will show you how to fasten off, but you basically, you're just going to go to the end, chain up one, and then you can cut your tail. And then we're going to stitch up the other side. Now you can see I'm at the folded end and I've only got a few stitches left. So I'm just going to go into those last few stitches. And now that I'm at the end, I'm going to chain up one and pull a tail and then you can cut your yarn. So now you should have one side that's all joined up. So now what you're going to need to do is grab the end of your yarn and make a slip knot. Insert your hook. And now you just need to go to the end of the other side. And this time it's gonna be a little bit different because we've got our chain row on this side. This is our foundation chain here. So now we're going to go through the foundation chain on either side of our panel. So you're gonna insert your hook into both sides and do a slip stitch. For the foundation chain, it does look a little bit better if you only pick up one of the chain stitches. So you can see there's sort of two, it's hard to see because it's black. But there's two stitches sitting at the top. If I go like this, there's two stitches. And it looks a bit better if you only pick up the top one. So if you can, just pick up the top stitch from the foundation chain and do a slip stitch just like we did on the other side. So I'll see if you can see here a bit better. You can see that there's a hole here where there's two stitches on top one and two the little v i'm just going to pick up that top stitch so go ahead and go up the rest of the row only picking up that top stitch of the foundation chain and when you make it to the end 
I will show you what to do, but it's the same as the other side. So you can go ahead and finish off your beanie. Once you've made it to the end of the row, you just need to chain up one like we did on the other side and pull through your tail or cut it off if you are not connected to the ball still. And then you can turn your beanie in the other way and it's finished. Make sure you give the ears a little pull in the corner to make sure that they pop out. And now all you need to do is weave in your ends and cut off the tails and that's your beanie. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you found this video useful. As always, if you have any questions, please leave them below in the comments and I will get back to you. If you make any of my projects, please tag me on Instagram at stephtashi underscore handmade.